the average consumer who buys paperback books to the market demand for paperback books. Well, that's something that you might have to explain, so let's look at that. All right. To derive a market demand curve, or to put it together to explain where we get it from, you have to take individual consumers, starting with Fred, and his kind of multi-looking demand curve. And then let's add some more people here. Let's take George. And let's say that at those same prices and quantities, George has a demand that's a lot steeper. And then let's go with... Not much for reader, is he? Nope. And then let's go with Anna. And Anna buys a lot of books anyway. Okay. And then let's add Oops. Zoe. That's not Q. Q. Um Zoe. Okay. Go with my dog. All right. Um my dog doesn't so much read the books as lay on top of them. Um but let's say that you know she would lay on a lot more books if we gave them to her. All right. So how do we go from Fred, the average consumer who buys paperback books, to the market? Okay. How do we derive market demand? Market demand is a horizontal summation of individual demand. That means if you lined up every single consumer in the entire economy who buys that product and add them all together, you would get the market demand curve. Now you add them at each price. So let's say we're at $18. You add this quantity to this quantity to this quantity to nothing, okay? All the way through every person who belongs in this market, that gives you the market demand. Is that hard to calculate? Yes. Are you going to be asked to do that? No. But you do have to understand that that's where it comes from. So market demand is a combination of all of the individuals who are willing and able to purchase a given quantity at a particular price level. You don't add the prices across because price is your independent variable, um, but you do add the quantities because quantity depends on price. So that's how we go from the individual to the market, and that is something that you might have to know. Now, let's play with a demand curve for a minute. Whoops. Get my cues back. My cues and my zeros today are uh, oh, what's going on. All right. Always get in the habit of labeling your axes because if you don't label them, it's difficult for any people here to figure out if you knew what you were talking about. And sometimes with a graphing question, you might get a point or two just from having your axes labeled the right way. So you want to always do that. Now, let's put in a demand curve. Now, the way we're going to draw them pretty much all the time is a straight line. It's a simplification. It's not that realistic. You saw what happened to Fred. It was kind of going off here somewhere. But it's easier to demonstrate a change if you're using a straight line than something that's kind of, you know, wonky looking and curved. So your demand curve, and let's stick with paperback books because that works. Paperback books. This is the market demand, Ketteris Paribus. Again, if we don't change anything, this is the market demand. But we got to look at what happens when we change something. Now, the first thing that we need to do is consider what happens when we change the price. 
So let's say this is 10 bucks, and this is maybe $4. What happens when you increase or decrease the price? Because any demand curve or any supply curve is drawn to accommodate differences in price, you're not shifting the curve. That's a question that will be on a test because it's something that's very basic to knowing how this works. You don't shift the curve. If the price is $4, people are going to buy a lot of books. If the price goes up to $10, they're willing to buy less. If the price goes up, you're moving this way along the curve. If the price goes down, you're moving this way along the curve. That is called a movement. A movement reflects different quantities based on changes in price. Change the price, you move along a given curve because it's drawn to reflect different prices. That's how we put it exactly where it is. So that's the first thing that you have to understand about changing a situation. Drawn for different prices, all you do is move up or down. You will see that, guaranteed. There will be something like that on the AP exam to make sure you understand the difference between a movement and a shift.